Hey everyone, this is Stephanie at Hightower Stitching with today's video 226. This is a fun, simple, pretty simple project. Only a couple of things that that will maybe help you make this project a little easier, but it is so pretty. A lot of people, a lot of people love the combination of creams and blues. And this is from The Love of Quilting, September, October 2022. And it had just attracted my attention. And then I like the, the geometry of it, just rectangles and squares. And so this is what we're going to be talking about today. I thought, well, I'll start and show you the sample block that I made first because I always like to do that and helps me get some of the bugs out of it and look at the colors a little bit. And you can see there's four rows in this block. And then, like I said, there's a combination of squares and different size rectangles across. When I started, I was going to do... Well, I'm not sure now what I was exactly going to do, but while I was thinking about my colors, because I had, I decided, I looked up on the shelf and I saw a, a jelly roll of cut, pre-cut, two and a half inch strips, and there were light strips and there were dark strips, and I thought, oh, that's what I need, because you're going to need some contrast with it. So instead of jumping into my uh, scrappy box, which is great for this, you can see some of the blues and things that I used for mine. Then I started with that jelly roll and that was really nice because everything was already two and a half inches wide. And we had already spent a lot of time, my <clears throat> sister-in-law was going on a trip to the Grand Canyon and she always takes sewing with her. And so we had cut and cut and cut the pieces that she was going to work on while she was gone. So when I found that jelly roll, it made me very happy. And it's going to have a different look than that block. If you have a look at this, and if we look up at the top right-hand corner, you can see... The block and what happens is the block is going to be over here there's going to be two always going to be two squares on the beginning of the row and then it's going to go down your four and that's going to be one of your blocks and so what I did was using that jelly roll I cut enough and I used every all of it that I could and I ended up with 15 blocks now, I did have to bring in some other colors of my light light. But you can see I don't have the contrast that you have with the navy one. And that's why I just wanted you to look at that. And this was uh, 5 by 3 blocks or 3 by 5, 15 blocks to do it. And what was fun when I got done and I got ready to quilt it. And I figured this was going to be a floor blanket or a throw that would get a lot of use, so I did it on the machine. And I just went and I stitched across. I hope you can see that. I stitched each row, but I put a double going across there. It was so simple. If you have a walking foot, that works great and it pulls it just but the top and the bottom at the same time. The regular um, well work foot would have worked also. Once I got those done, I said, well, that doesn't hold it together. I like my quilts to sort of hold together. So I looked at my squares, and what I did was went over to my squares, and now ran up and down this time vertically, and I put a row of stitching on one side, and then a row of stitching on the other side, and it gave me this nice inside with the boxes on it and I like the way that looked. It looks so geometric to go along with the quilt. And then I still had enough left that I pieced together the pieces I had just at random and those became my binding. So 
that really used up a lot of the material. But like I said, I did have to add a couple of pieces. And sometimes I got tired and wanted some more color, like this little green piece. I added that in out of my stash. And, but mostly it was the lights that I needed to add. And I made you two nice cheat sheets. I love those because it really helps me to understand what it is I'm going to do. Sometimes you just start and you go. But this one I wanted to know ahead of time, like always. So in the, if the colored part, and this makes a 14 by 8 block, which is really nice. You're going to have ABC and ABC. They're all going to be the same the same, like the A here is A here, and B and B, and C and C, those are the same. They are all two and a half inch wide, the pieces that you work with. One set's going to be your colors that you're using, if it's blues or reds or a scrappy. And then the other one's going to be your colors you're going to use. You might use a more creamier, you may want to go with white that that's what goes in there and this it makes one block there's five A's which are the squares there's four B's which are strips that are four and a half inches and then there are C's which are six and a half inches and then you repeat it for your other part and if you want to make the quilt that's in the book you need 40 blocks which are going to run 10 by 4, and there's one extra vertical row on the end that matches what's already there. For the one I have, it's 48 by 39, 15 blocks, which are arranged in three columns of five. And you can repeat the first column at the very end, but I, I didn't do that. I already had it fixed. Now, the next part is back to that sample that we have. And that's my other cheat sheet. And once you get used to laying them out, it gets easier. But if you walk away and you've got to come back and start again, it's nice to know what's going to be on there. Try to get this up. And actually, you have two repeat patterns, but the second pattern reverses and what that means is you're going to have <clears throat> the first row is going to have two A's, a B, an A, a B, and an A. You're going to have six patches on that row. The second row is going to be A and then B and then C and B and it's only four patches, which would be this one right here. The square, the B, the big C, and back to the B. All right. Now you're going to re repeat the pattern, but you're going to reverse the colors. So if you look at mine, the A row, which is blue up here, is now cream. And that's going to happen for both of these rows. They're the same lettering. They're the same number of patches. But it's reversed the colors. And that's where you might like to have yourself a, a cheat sheet to watch until you make... Well, and when you get one block made, you can look at it. But um, that would help you to get started on that. And this is one where it's really nice if you go ahead and lay your block out before you begin to sew because then you don't have to keep wondering where you are and what you need to do next. So I'm going to start the sewing part right now. <clears throat> when I first started, I had it set out like this and I would, because I wanted to be get it right, I sewed on the first two squares, <clears throat> excuse me, and then I put on the rectangle, and then I put on a square and rectangle and square one at a time. And <clears throat> That was slow, but I wanted to have one block that I knew was exactly right. And then as I started the next one and the next one working with that jelly roll material, I found out that I could sew them in pairs because each row it was even. So I actually started and I sewed the whole 
block with pairs and then went back and worked with that. So I'll show you that. I didn't just do that. And you can just do the first row of pairs, then go back and sew them together. That's how I started that. But then I said, oh my gosh, look at this. I, the, every, every row has got pairs. So I'm going to do some machine chaining. And I'm going to take and do my first row. I'm going to go into my second row and my third row and my fourth row and do it in pairs. And then there's only one thing to watch out for when you get uh, finished doing that. So now I'm taking from the first row and I've got the two the first squares. I'm going to do one fourth inch in a minute. Okay. I'm going to go one fourth inch. And I actually lowered my stitch length by by one down to 2.3. Then I took the next pair. Now then I put the next one was going to be this rectangle and then a square. And I'm just going to tag that right on right on here. And I'm going to take the next one, which is the same pattern, and the square. And this will be my first row sewn together. And we always know there's three, so there's no problem. So then I'm going to go to the second row. And I have one square and a rectangle. No funny stuff, just went straight to the next row. All right, then I have the big C. The longest piece is the C piece. It came next, and then a B. And I'm gonna put it on there. See, look how fast that goes. Once you get it laid out, now I'm gonna repeat, and I've got my light squares. And then I have a rectangle and a light square. And then another one. That gets us through row three. And you'd continue it and do row four on there. And I'm, I'm just gonna do it because I'm gonna keep that block. So we'll just add it and we're making, doing really good today, I think because there's the next one. There's the big C, but he's light now. And here's the dark. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I've got this nice banner sewn together. I'm not, I'm not gonna cut them all apart right now. I'm gonna cut the first two pairs. All right. And then you might want to look back at your pattern. And here's where I did some of my finger pressing. Because that really made it go fast. I made it go well. And this material was nice for doing that. I didn't have to run. And this is probably one that you don't want to run and press every time. Um, so it doesn't get distorted. But now I looked back at my sample. And I've got my two squares my rectangle and then back to square. So I'm gonna hook him on. And for my sanity, I'm gonna go ahead and, and cut right behind that at the one behind it. Now I know exactly where, where I am. And then here's the next part, All right? Here's the part you need to remember because this is, um, the first part. This is the row, first row, and if you remember, it had three pairs of um, that went together. So I don't want to stop sewing my what I'm doing. So I'm just going to take and cut off that third pair, and I'm going to set them here because I cut off the tail going out through there. I know this is row one, and then when I get done, I'll just go back and add that one onto it. And that'll happen two times because you have two rows like that. So now I'm going to come and I'm going to be on row two. I'm going to take the next two pairs. And I'm going to look back. I'm going to start with a square.
And then I'm going to have the big C. I'm looking back at my sample that I did. All right, and so it should look like that, and it does. And I'm going to put it on. And that's going to be the end of that row because we only had four patches. All right. Then we're down to the next one, which is the reverse. Row three is the reverse of the colors. And I'm going to cut off only the first two. Every time I just cut off two, except when I have that extra one for row one and three. And there's the two blocks. All right, and then I'm looking back because I need the dark one. Okay, row three. Okay, now here's on row three, remember, we had six patches, so we've got three pairs. I'm going to clip him off, and I'm going to put him over here following the other one, because I'll know that this is one and this is three. All right, so now I'm going to go down to four, which should have the big C in it, and it looks like I haven't got it right, So, but guess what? I know I've got a lot of pieces, and I'm going to come back and figure it out. It looks like I shorted, although I had it right right there. All right, I'll waste something. But I know it can't. I know it could be this one. So I'm going to put this one over here, and I'm going to add this one on because Big C is on the fourth row. Now, I did this, guys, and I did it over and over with that pattern, with that, those pattern blocks. So, don't panic. All right, so let's take this one off. And this should be the first one that's got two blocks in it. All right, then this one should be that, and that's exactly what I said. That was row one. So, we're going to shoot it off. Because that's one, I'm going to cut the t other parts off. All right, now I'm going to look at the next one. And this should be row two, and it is. There's the nice C right in there, so he's finished. So I'm just going to let him sit. That means the next one would be three. And you remember three's missing a part. All right, so one, two, three, there's my two squares. Here's my other one. Sure enough, there he is. I just got off when I was doing it, but don't throw anything away. <laughs> don't get frustrated either if you can help it, because now we've used up everything over here. We've used up everything on my board, and I can go ahead, and I'm going to Let's see, I actually got where I could start putting it together because here was one with its last piece on it. Here's two with a C on it. And I'm going to go ahead and sew one, two, three, four. I'm, oh, that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and sew one and two together. It's sort of like a little game, but it sure does make it nice. And I've tended to open up my seams. And if you haven't, you can fold one one way and the, one the other the other way to get them to lock. And you don't, they don't meet everywhere. They only meet there. So I tended to take and put uh, a pin in that end and a pin in this end because if any of your things were off, you'll be able to work them into, like there, there it goes, it's perfect. And I'll put the slide of him down so I don't lose him. Nothing worse than losing a piece and you're sitting there looking for it. And can't watch it every once in a while. And I, like I said, I like to open mine, so now, as I'm going, I'm going to open this because there's nothing, there's not another one behind it. There's one behind that, but it's open. 
and everything's going great. If you just do give it a little tug, everything fits. If something goes off the end, you're gonna you're going to uh, look at your blocks when you get done, and then trim them if they're uh, not quite 14 by what 14 by eight. All right, so this should be row three, and this should be row four. And it is. You've got two here and one here. And then you take and sew this row together, just like we did that one. Just fold it over, pin both ends. Now I'm going to have two, two pieces. This is nice. Okay. And then this side. And I think, I think the thing was looking at the pattern and seeing how pretty it is. And then the other one is Maybe thinking about using a jelly roll or part of it to help you so the colors, you don't have to worry about the colors. You just let it go unless you get in there or do a scrappy one. And then um, the other thing is then when you get ready to sew it together, because it is a lot of pieces, a lot of patches, there are a 20 pieces for that block. So this might help you and make it, but the first one make sure you got it right go ahead and do it one piece at a time and add it and add it and then do the second row and then start putting your blocks together and we'll come back over to the sample and you can see how pretty it is and the sections in it and you can see that you have all kinds of combinations that you can do and I just call this the charm of a blue and cream quilt. It's, it's amazing how many people are drawn to a blue and cream quilt for just as an idea of a way to start. This is Stephanie at Hightower Stitching. Thank you for watching. Please hit subscribe and like. And if you have comments, something that will help someone else, please leave that on the comments.